Hello everyone. In this video, we will be looking at the first lesson of chapter 3 that is about lines and angles. Yes, this is where your new geometry lessons actually start. Rather, the other ones were just they had given you an idea of what geometry would be like. So from here onwards, you will be dealing with many figures and many things related to geometry. So before we get started, first let me give you a quick introduction about lines and angles in this lesson. As we go on, I will keep explaining about the different kinds of angles and the different kinds of formed angles when the two lines are interrupted by another line. What happens? All of this we will see when we go on with the lesson. So to get started, let's first look at what are the different kinds of um, lines we have so here is the relationship between lines now if you've got a cube or if you've got a rectangular prism or um, something which looks similar to this there are some things which is geometrically proven to be there so first let's start with the parallel lines now all of us know what are parallel lines parallel lines are two lines which they keep moving in the same direction but they do not touch each other or they do not join each other they do not intersect each other in fact so what do you do or how do we identify what are the parallel sets of lines if you are given in a given figure to you so usually in figures they do draw like this they will be drawn something similar to an arrow which shows that two lines are parallel to each other. Now in this figure, they have not drawn. So even if it is not drawn, how can you identify whether a set, which are the set of parallel lines? So here is an idea for you. This is how you have to draw when there is a set of parallel lines. This is how parallel lines look. They are two lines, but they do not touch each other. They can go on in any direction. Not necessarily they need to be straight. They can even go sideways, but then they will not touch each other. And so parallel lines are the two lines that are coplanar. Coplanar means on the same plane, but they do not intersect. So from this figure, we could say that line DC is parallel to AB because that's how you identify parallel lines. They should be lines that are straight, but they do not intersect. So how do you write this in symbolic form of like geometry? We say line CD or DC, totally up to you. We can write lines in any way. Parallel, this is the symbol we use for parallel to VA. This is how we write it. Now, is that only this figure has CD and BA as parallel lines? No, there are many sets of parallel lines in this figure. So we could even say AD is parallel to BC. We can also say CG is parallel to BF. We can say CB is parallel to GF. So the way, as I already told you, there are many sets of parallel lines. We can even say DC is parallel to HG. So it's how you observe the figure. You have to observe the figure very carefully and then find out a set of parallel lines. Mostly it will be marked for you like this. If it's not marked, you can mark it and make, see whether they are parallel or not. Or, or overwriting would also help you. Overwriting over this would uh, over drawing in fact over the lines would also help you identify about the parallel lines so now let's see what are skew lines now skew lines are also a kind of lines but let's see what's special between them so skew lines are two lines that are not coplanar and they do not intersect which means skew lines are again two lines but the speciality of them is they do not intersect, they do not join in any way. And also they are on two different planes. So this is how skew lines look like. One of the skew, one of the line will be in one plane and another one will be on completely another plane. So let's try to figure out from this figure how are skew lines and what do they look like. So for example, take AD. So AD line is on this plane, right? It's on plane A, B, C, D, or you could use any three letters to use name a plane. So if A, B, sorry, A, D line, we, we are talking about line A, D, which is a skew line for line A, D, it could be H, G, or it could even be G, C, because they are lines completely on two different planes, or we could say 
the skew line for AD could also be EF because they have no relationship with each other. Though they're on the same figure, but they do not intersect and they are on completely two opposite, they're completely like two different planes. So these are skew lines. They are two lines, but they do not have any relationship between each other. The next is a set of parallel perpendicular lines. Now, perpendicular lines are again special lines because they always intersect to form 90 degree angles, which are right angles. Now, perpendicular lines will usually be shown in this way. You can see these are the marks for right angles. These are symbol for right angles. So we could say AB is perpendicular to CD. Wherever they meet and they form a right angle that's where they are perpendicular lines so are the are these the only perpendicular lines a b is perpendicular to c b no we could take any other perpendicular line as well so we could say a d is perpendicular to a b and also we can say a d is perpendicular to t c now if you would notice the words the letter gets repeated so that's how you can identify a pair of perpendicular lines here also they have marked with a uh, right right angle sign so this is again bc is also perpendicular to cg so there are again many sets of perpendicular lines so you could choose two or how many they're asking for the next set of lines is the parallel planes now they're not lines in fact they're planes now planes means you know we are talking about the faces so the easy way to remember parallel planes is like one up and one down so let's see whether we can find parallel planes let's talk about this plane now so there's a front plane which is a b c or a b d anything so a b d uh, plane a b d which is the parallel plane for a b d that's e f h so parallel planes are like one up and the other one will be below it. So I cannot draw it properly here. Now, not necessarily it should be only like the front and back. It can be up and down, front and back, or even side and side. So these are parallel planes. They are planes, but they do not touch each other. So let's find another set of parallel planes. We could say CGF. What is the parallel set of plane for CGF? Now we are talking about the side. So the side plane is again AEH. So you can take any, I mean this plane to be parallel to this. So with this idea, uh, let's discuss the answers for this four questions. Now, this is a triangular prism given to you. They want you to find a pair of parallel segments. Now, already I gave you a hint when I'm explaining parallel segments will be marked with these lines. So from that, we can say that BE is parallel to, and this is going to be BE, segment BE is parallel to CF. So this is one set of parallel segments. How about another one? You have AD parallel to CF again. So you could even write that. So we can also say AD is parallel to CF. Now, are we done with the set of parallel lines? No, because there is one more. That's AD is parallel to BE as well. So we can even write that. That's why they have marked all of those parallel segments with the same mark. So AD is parallel to BE, segment BE. So you can choose any one. They just said for you to identif identify each. So this is how you identify, right? Now let's go to a pair of skew segments. Now skew means the ones which are not related. So let's take a skew segment, say, um, let's take, which one do you want to take? Let's take AB, this one, okay? So which is the skew segment for AB? Now you need to choose something which is not related. Now we can say CB and CA are on the same plane. BE is intersecting AB, so B is not a pair of skew segment for AB. Now what else can be skew segment? Yes, CB, CF can be a pair of skew segment for AB because AB is on a different plane and CF is on a different plane. 
or you could even say a b is q to e f because that's again totally two different and also d f so there are many as you can see so they are a pair of skew segments right now if you would take a c you can say e f is a pair of skew segment for e f uh, a c or even you can say e d is a skew segment for a c so there are many now next is a pair of perpendicular segments. Perpendicular will always be marked with the right angle mark here. So easily from the figure we can say EF, segment EF is perpendicular. This is the symbol for perpendicular to FC. Or also we could say BC because if one is a right angle, these all are going to be right angles. Okay, so we could even say BC is perpendicular to CF. We can also say CB is perpendicular to BE or EF. Uh, we already wrote that. So this is how you need to identify perpendicular segments. Now, how about parallel planes? You need to identify a, par a set of parallel planes. Now, this figure is special because it's a triangular prism. So we cannot say that C, B, E, F is a parallel plane for the other side because they both are intersecting. Can you see this is the line of intersection? So the only pair of parallel planes we have for this figure is A, B, C is parallel to D, E, F. So this is the only pair of parallel planes we have for this particular figure because it's not a rectangular prism, neither is it a parallel segment uh, neither is it a q so this is the only thing a b c is parallel to d e f because the front triangle with the back triangle the one behind the up cannot be this down one cannot be a parallel segment for any because there is nothing up so this is the only pair of parallel planes we have right now let's go on and see what happens when a pair of angles is formed when there are a set of angles formed when a parallel lines are cut by a transversal. So first let's see, these are two parallel lines which we could name as L and M. These are, a parallel, these are a set of parallel lines. Now what happens if a pair of parallel lines has been cut by a transversal or has been disturbed by a transversal? This is called as a transversal line, the one which interrupts two parallel lines. So let's name that as transversal T. So all they have their own names. What happens is that there are some angles formed. Now the shaded parts show all these angles which are formed. These, there are eight angles formed. So angle one, angle two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. These are the eight angles formed. And each of these eight angles are related to each other. Let's see. Now, the one which is highlighted here, as you can see, these are a set of interior angles. Interior means inside. So these in, the word in itself is there. So that means these four angles are considered to be interior angles. And the remaining ones which are outside are called as exterior angles. So here we have angle three, four, five, six as interior and one, two, eight, seven, seven, eight as exterior. Now let's see how are they related. Okay, now again, the same set of parallel lines cut by the transversal and the same set of lines, I'm sorry, same set of angles. Let me name them as A, B, A, B. Now, why am I naming them as A, B, A, B? You can see the similar angles are marked with the same color and also the same letters. So this is just to avoid your confusion. So if you name this as A, you name the other one as B. And then the other one as A because two Bs cannot be together. So A, B, you name it in this way, right? So we have alternate, A, B, A, B, we have alternatives. Now, why did I ask you to mark them like this? Because that will make it easier for us to identify the set of angles. Now, already you have an idea what are interior angles and what are exterior angles, right? Now, let's see 
How are they related? Let's talk about alternate interior angles. Now, interior means we are only talking about these angles. Alternate means opposite. So, which are the two opposite angles which are inside? We have four and six. Four and six are opposite and they are inter in inside. So, the, we call them as alternate interior angles. Similarly, angle 3 and 5 are also inside and they are also alternate interior angles. Now, if you notice the color, both of them have same colors. This is brown, this is brown, this is yellow, this is yellow, which means the measures of both these angles are equal, which is if angle 3 is 80, so angle 5 is also 80 degrees. If angle 4 is 120 degrees, angle 6 is also 120 degrees. That's how they are related. So alternate interior angles are equal. Now let's see what are the exterior angles, alternate exterior. So exterior means outside. So we can say angle 1 and angle 7 are opposites which means they are alternate exterior angles and also angle 2 and angle 8, which are also alternate exterior angles. Now, again, notice the colors among them. They are equal. So, which means angle 1 is equal to angle 7. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 8, which means they will have the same measures. Let me give you a quick hint here. All the same colored angles have the same measures. So angle one will be equal to angle three. Angle five will be equal to angle seven. Angle two will be equal to angle five. Angle six will be equal to angle eight, which are called as vertically opposite angles. Angle one and three are called as vertically opposite angles because they're vertical, they're in the shape of a V. Can you see that they're in the shape of V and they are opposite to each other. So they are called as vertically opposite angles. So what are same-sided interior angles? Same-sided interior angles are the angles in the shape of a U or rather they're in the shape of a bucket. They're like the angles inside the bucket. So angle four and five are on the same side and they are interior. So alternate same-sided interior angles are angle four and five and three and six. What's special about same-sided interior angles? When you add angle four and angle five, that should give you 180 degrees. Similarly, if you add angle three and angle six, that should give you 180 as well. So now the other one we have is corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are the angles like uh, one and then you alternate it. Leave the ang next angle and come back to this angle. So angle one and five are corresponding angles. So what is the corresponding angle for angle two? This is angle two. Leave one angle, the other one. So angle two and six are corresponding. Which is the corresponding angle for angle four? This is angle four, leave one angle, the other one. So angle four and eight are corresponding. Again, this uh, connection between both of them is they all are equal. Angle four is equal to angle eight. So if angle four is 100 degrees, angle eight is going to be 100 degrees as well. This is how the angles are related. So keeping these, I know it's a bit longer because this lesson has all the of those inside. So yes, it does take time. So let's go ahead and keep that, all the things that we learned now and try to solve these questions. So in exercise five to 10, give one example from each of the figures. So they just asked you to give one example. So a transversal, which is the transversal line Transversal is the line which cuts through the parallel lines. So that's line Z. So a transversal is line Z. How about parallel lines? Which are the two parallel lines we have in this figure? X and Y because they are the two parallel lines. So line X and Y. How about corresponding angles? No, just now I told you what are corresponding angles. Corresponding angles, now let's find the corresponding angle for angle one. So for corresponding angle, you leave one, then you move to the other one. So angle one and three are corresponding. Now, are they the only corresponding angles we have? No, we have two and four. So two and four are also a pair of corresponding angles.
And how about another two angles? Angle eight and angle six are also corresponding. Angle seven and angle five are also corresponding. So these are all sets of corresponding angles. You can write any one. How about alternate interior angles? Now interior means inside. So we are talking about these angles. So which are the alternate interior angles? Angle two and angle six because they are alternative. So angle two and angle six. Similarly, angle seven and angle three. So angle seven and angle three are also a pair of interior angles. Alternate interior angles, so you can choose any one from this. Now that we have finished with alternate interior, let's move to alternate exterior. So exterior angles are these which are outside. So which is the alternate one for one? That's five. So angle one and angle five. Is that the only pair of alternate exterior angles? No, we have eight and four as well. So angle eight and angle four. So that's how it, easy it is once you understand about the angles. Next is same side and interior angles. Now again, they're talking about the interior angles means it should be among this four. Same sided means on the same side of the line of the transversal. So which are the two same sided interior angles? Two and three. So angle two and angle three, or you could even say angle seven and angle six. Wasn't that easy? Once you understand what the angles are, it's very easy to identify the angles. Right. Let's move on to the next part in this. Now, they have told you use this figure. The figure shows a utility pole with an electric line and a telephone line. So this is the telephone line. This is the electric line. For each angle pair, the angled wire is a tension wire. So... I think you can understand the electrical line and the telephone line are parallel lines. This tension wire is the, what is that called? Is the transversal. So for each angle pair given, identify the transversal and classify the angle pair, right? So let's see, how about angle five and six? They want you to identify angle five and six. What kind of angles are they? They are on the same side and they are interior. So that becomes same sided interior angles. So angle five and six are same sided interior angles. Now we'll, you do not have to become nervous looking at the, this is a problem solving question. It is just that you have to identify the angles. Okay, next is angle one. And angle four. How about this two? They are opposite, which means they are alternate. But then are they inside or outside? They are, of course, outside. Inside means they will be talking about this part. Now they are outside. So that means that is alternate. Alternate exterior angles. So the next one is about angle one and angle two. So where is angle one and two? Angle one is here, angle two is here. So they're on the same side again, but then not together. They are like one after the other. So which angles did we learn about one after the other on the same side? They were the, what kind of angles? Hope you remember. That is the corresponding angles. So angle one and two are the corresponding angles. And next is angle five and angle three. So angle five and angle three. So they're talking about the interior angles. Now they're opposite to each other. That makes it more easy for us. That is alternate interior angles. Now, are we done with the question? Not yet, because we just identified the angles. They said for each pair of given 
angle pair given, identify the transversal. So we are going to identify the transversal for each of this. So for angle five and six, which is the transversal? Is it the utility pole or the tension wire? Now this is, they're talking about angle five and six. So which is the transversal? That's the utility pole. So you need to write the transversal as utility pole. How about angle one and four? Which is the transversal for angle one and four? Angle one and four. Which is the transversal? The tension wire. So you just need to write the transversal is the tension wire. Now just to identify it, let's write this here, transversal. Because if not, anyone will be confused. What's this alternate exterior angles and tension wire? Okay, so the transversal is tension wire. So how about angle one and two, which is going to be the transversal for angle one and two? For this, which is the transversal. This is the telephone line, right? But so the transversal for this is going to be the telephone line. And for angle five and three, so this is angle five and three. So which is the transversal for this? The transversal for this is again, the utility pole because this is the parallel and this is the transversal. So that's going to be the utility pole again. So this is how you identify transversals and parallel lines and same-sided interior angles, same-sided exterior angles, corresponding angles. Now we have learned many new things in this one lesson. So as I would always suggest you practice some more questions because the same dialogue I have to say, keep thinking it's easy because if again something is difficult, your mind gets trained to think that it's difficult and yes it won't respond or it won't cooperate for learning anything so just take it easily think you can do it and keep practicing so till we meet again keep practicing